Hello guys, welcome back to the bench and today we're going to be testing flat black. Um, I was just going to test this Mousseau black against black 3.0 of which I reviewed earlier in the year. But when uh, I posted the video, this company saw the video and asked me if I'd like to test this paint. So they sent it to me and uh, we're going to test it, but instead of comparing it to the black 3.0, I figured we would go ahead and check every flat black I have uh, on the wall here. And so for the test, we're going to check out some spray paints, Vallejo flat black, this Krylon ultra flat black camouflage, uh, testers flat black, Tamiya flat black, AK third gen intense colors. Each one is labeled a little different. Standard intense inks. This one's labeled as intense intense black um, Mission models just says black, but all their paints are matte. So that's matte black Game air black again. All their paints are black in the lineup of matte in the lineup. So black is matte black and uh, I imagine it's the same as model air, but hey, I had it on the shelf So I'm testing it game air and model air pro acryl coal black which uh According to the website, is there flat black? Dispay, flat black. It's fault black, F-A-L-T. It's hard to see. If you can see it there, it's really bad labeling on this product. As far as the darker colors go, you can't read the label. Uh, Gaia Notes, Gaia, number 12, flat black. XF1, Tamiya, matte black. Uh, Tamiya's Lacquer, LP3, flat black. Mr. Color number 33, flat black. Aqueous number 12, flat black. Model Master, can't go wrong with there, flat black right there. To me, is new, uh, well, new to me. Uh, their enamel lineup, flat black. XF1, Ravel, matte black. These came in the tins, but as I showed in the video, I took them out of the tins and put them in. Uh, in these bottles, let me show you where I got these jars from. I bought a little box, a couple boxes of these uh, empty Tamiya jars. Here we go. And uh, this label actually peels off. I'll do it right now, actually. It peels right off. There you go. You toss that and you're left with a nice jar. And what I did was I, uh, on my printer, I printed the Ravel logo and then I labeled each one. And no more tin. I could just unscrew it and uh, works perfect. Perfect. And last but not least, good old fashioned testers, the $2 jar. You should be able to get anywhere. Another brand that's impossible to read the jar. Look at this. How about a nice simple, how about what I did and created a nice, <laughs> easy to read label and, uh, or any of the other ones actually, but it's sideways here, abbreviated flat black. Uh, really awful labeling as far as that goes, but um, I'm gonna brush them on a spoon this hair And we're gonna airbrush it as far as everybody else is concerned. I'm gonna airbrush them um, I still have my sample of the black 3.0. I don't know if I got the brushed on or Airbrush, but these look the same. I feel uh, Airbrushed or brushed, but for the rest you know, other than a spray can I will airbrush the rest onto a spoon and we're going to compare all the flat blacks together. Now for this I'm going to use my ultimate airbrush thinner. Um, I've been practicing all week. It worked with everything. It worked with my homemade thinner which I'm pretty low of. I gotta make a new batch. It worked perfect with that too. So uh, you're going to mix this 50-50 or one to one and for this I'm going to use one of my Badger Patriots. I have a couple of them now. 105 Patriot. This pushes um, the thicker acrylic paints really well atomizes it good right through it, it it's just a, a good airbrush for that kind of paint um, here's my other Patriot and here's my Sotar I haven't uh, reviewed yet but the review is coming up and um, love this uh, stand I'll put another link in I think I did it in my earlier video I'll put a link below for this it holds three obviously I got more than that but this is great to have convenience right by the the spray booth it's a it's a great great uh, airbrush holder really nice but um, for this we had to shake this really well all right and we're gonna go with a thicker steering stick here with this popsicle stick 
but a nice wide jar. I do like the jar, and it's a large size. I don't know what it costs because they sent it to me, but I understand this is in the $20 range along with the black 3.0. They seem to be on the high end here of uh, paint cost. Now, I've shaken this up and stirred it really well before coming on camera, so all you need to do is go like this. Whatever you can get off of the stick, um, you can try this method too. Let me do one of my coffee stirrers here. What you do is just scrape it right off. Look at all that paint. Now this should be enough. Yeah, that, that should be enough for us to get this uh, this project going. Actually, while we got it open, why don't we go ahead and... Oops, sorry guys. I hit the stupid camera again. We're going to brush some on, so we're going to go straight in. We're not going to thin it at all. We'll just brush this stuff right onto the spoon. I'll show you how it looks. Um, brushed. Uh, before it's dry, then I'm, of course we'll see it when it's dry. I'm trying to hold it up for you guys and work around this camera. All right, that's good. Now you're gonna see all look all lumpy bumps and and brush marks and little bubbles. There's a little spot there. This stuff dries so well, it, it levels itself right out. It looks like it's gonna dry awful. Look at the pin bubbles. But uh, all as it dries, all the bubbles, because it stretches itself out, and all the bubbles uh, will disappear. So let me put this aside so I don't rub onto it. There we go. Now you're going to clean this with warm water, which I will go do now. One second, guys. All right, guys. Just like that, we're back. I had to uh, clean out the brush before it got dried up. Now this stuff is great because it's got its own little squeeze bottle. So, I'm going to go 50-50 or, uh, you know, one-to-one -one, I guess would be the proper term. You can see how thick this stuff is. I'm trying to stir it for you guys. Always give it the, the swirl on the bottom. Uh, it still looks thick because this stuff is thick to start with. If you're going to be airbrushing this stuff, you're going to really get your money's worth because you're going to double that up if you think about it. All right, I think we're ready to go. And there it is. Now you're going to drag it on the cup. See it? You're going to leave a little trail behind of the pigment. And that, that's a good consistency. It's got that uh, milk, skim milk consistency. And uh, using this particular airbrush, we shouldn't have a problem anyway. You know, if it looks too thick for you guys, then it probably is. You know, you're going to go again. I would use the biggest needle you guys have. This is my middle one so this is a five this is a 0.5 millimeter I think I got the 0.7 and the 0.3 I got all three needles for the Patriot and that's it now it's gonna go over a spoon with primer I recommend primer with this stuff makes it a little more durable and it's not that durable to start with but it, it, it needs something to grip to um, traditionally I think you paint this on canvas but uh, so it needs something to grip to so I'm gonna use a, a primer doesn't matter gray or white because it should go on pure black let's head over to the booth now we'll take our Patriot with us we're gonna spray this at 15 psi and let's see what this stuff looks like all right guys here we are back at the booth instead of back at the bench you can tell I've been spraying a lot of uh, flat black as my filter is uh, almost all black the spoon has been primered with uh, mr. surfacer in the spray can white and uh, we're going to go on very rough is uh, how they want you to do it. So let's see how we got this going. Atomizing pretty good. And just what you saw me do there is how we're going to do it on the spoon. See it? They want you to build it up slow in this rough texture. Now we're going to go with air drying it. I'm going to use my uh, flash dry technique of blowing the airbrush air directly on the spoon to dry the paint off. First layer. Again, this is 15 psi. Um, if, you got, even, if you're going with a thicker acrylic on this airbrush, you need to only go about 20 psi and you should be able to push it right through. Anyway, let's go in with the second coat.
There it is again. Now we're coming in. You want to flash it dry. I'm going to show you what happens if you just go in heavy on the first coat without the uh, flash drying in between. I'm going to show you that right after I dry this. It dries really fast. You can see it's starting to dull already. You're not going to have to wait too long for this paint to dry, that's for sure. Missed a spot in the bottom. Let's get that spot. All right, I'll put this down for a second. What happens is you end up getting a, uh, it ends up being this shiny looking. It never really dulls itself. You got to get it on, on a slow coat like I'm doing and dry it in between. It's going to go on roughly in between. You can see how dark it's getting already. So uh, I'm going to go in now with the final coat. Just get it nice and even. It'll look like that. Now, if you go shiny on the first coat, it's going to stay shiny, believe it or not. But uh, I'm going to go put this in the dehydrator, let it dry up. We'll check on our brush piece, and uh, we're going to go pair, compare all the rest of these against this Mousseau Black and see how they look. We'll catch you back at the bench. All right, guys, here we are back at the bench with the uh, final results of everything sprayed uh, or brushed. So let's go ahead and look at Mousseau Black. There it is. This is the airbrushed. And here's the one I brushed earlier in the video. You can see the brush marks. Um, but all the bubbles and everything else are gone. Um, so it did end up brushing pretty nice. And, uh, but that's over plastic. This, of course, was over primer. But you can see the difference. It's much smoother. All right. Now, just holding it up in the distance, you can tell it's already much darker than the rest. So let's compare it to Black 3.0. It has that same dullness to it, but you can tell that um, this one's darker. This one, I believe, is my brushed on because I could tell right here this wasn't my airbrushed one. So let's compare it to the brushed on version of theirs. It looks like it brushes much better. It looks like it brushes way better. Look at that. There's no marks on this at all. And that's probably one coat, too, because I can tell it's a little light in certain areas, which means I probably just went over it like this one time. So it does look better than that brushed, but this does appear to be much darker. Let's put it in between all of them. And you can see it right there. I'm off to the side here because that's where I'm standing with the camera. I'm not sure if it'll work with uh, with this black t-shirt that I have here, but let's see. This is the black 3.0 in the middle. So there you can really see it. It's almost grayish compared to it. So this is blacker than the black 3.0 um, for sure. Now let's go over the rest and see what we got. Here we go. All right, Vallejo spray paint. Not bad. However, it does have a texture to it. It's hard for you guys to see. Now it looks good here until you put it up next to this. However, this must be way more durable, you know. We'll do a tape test. On some of these. That's pretty good. We'll do the, uh, we'll do the Maso Black last because I think, I have a feeling it's going to peel off. But that looks good. All right, Krylon. Yes, Krylon... Matte black, uh, it's, it's not great, it's a little uneven. You can see here where it kind of runs. I have trouble with Krylon for some reason. Let's compare it to, uh, yeah, it has that same look, but if you can see it in person, it's very faded. Whereas this is very nice and smooth and even looking. And of course, to compare it to black 3.0, no difference. I mean, no comparison. All right, this is testers in the spray can. 
very nice and even. What is that spot on there? Oh, just dust. Look at that. Now, of course, this compares well to the others. It's uh, it's even. It's durable. I believe it's durable. Get this off camera, sorry guys. Yeah, testers, is, uh, tester enamels are really durable. Here it is against the, was so black. Yeah, if you, that wasn't next to it. It looks pretty good, but uh, not as good. But hey, this is a shootout of all the matte blacks. This is matte black from uh, Tamiya, and uh, this so far feels the best. It's got a really smooth feel to it. Not bad, huh? Let's get the Mousseau up there. Yes, I mean, you can really see it there. But I like it. It goes on good. AK, I couldn't fit over there. I think it's over here somewhere. Here it is. AK Intense Black. Looks like every other one so far. It came out kind of uneven. I mean, it was my lousy airbrushing job. But, uh... Not the best. Let's compare it to the black. It's the same. You can tell the trend here. This is just taking it to another level of deepness of light. Non-light reflection is what you're really seeing. You know, let's check this AK. Oh, man, look at this. So that didn't stick well. Yeah, it seems to be getting marked up. So not as durable. Oh, that was over here. Not as durable. All right, let's move on. Mission Model Paints, flat black. It's just called black. This sprayed on really nice. It's very even. Can you guys see it? I thought this airbrush quite well. And look at that. It's kind of, it's close to the shading. I mean, you're going to really see it, the difference here. But you can see how this doesn't reflect light. That's where the really dark black comes from, the deep black. But kind of impressed here with this one and this was uh, this is the one you got to mix in the the poly the poly mixture and the plus the thinner but hey it, 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 it went right on really well yeah it's durable too not even a hint of it coming off compared to the AK good stuff the mission turned out to be pretty good all right all right game air where is the game air hold on guys I think it's over here game air there we go all right Again, another one that went on good. No thinning required. It goes right into that airbrush, the Patriot. Larger needles, you don't need to do it to thin it. And again, it, this is close to the mission. It has that really nice... Yeah, it's. I mean, if you get the light not to reflect, you're almost in the same shading. So it really comes down to the light reflection. But this isn't durable at all. So, I mean, you got to take one <laughs> as, that, as a factor, you know. But... This is Game Air. Not bad. Really good. I imagine Model Air is the same. Model Air. Same thing. Matter of fact, let's grab that Game Air I just had. Yeah, it's got to be the same paint in another jar. That's all. It's the same thing. Same and quite good. If you can't find your Game Air, you want black, yeah, Model Air is the same thing. Same thing. All right, Pro Acrylic, Pro Acryl. Now this one has a rough feel. Can you hear it? But um, this one is, is uh, boy, if it was a little deeper in pigment, it would be good. Now this isn't, it doesn't say flat black. It does say coal black, see it? So we'll take that with a grain of salt because look at it. It really does, it really lacks that light and reflection, see it? So if it was a little more pigment heavy, this would have been the closest. Definitely would have been the closest. And uh, let's test uh, game air and model air. We forgot to check uh, for durability on that one, so let's go back and do that. Yeah, I've tested this before. It's really good. Let's try the Pro Acrylic. Now, this has that rough texture. This might peel off. No, it didn't. It didn't peel off. No, pretty good. This one's pretty good. It has the least amount of light reflection so far. The Pro Acrylic. Dispay. This was a this was a complete failure. Um, I sprayed this a few times. I got the same results, and I used their own thinner. Same result, and I don't know what this is. Uh, 
It's not, <laughs> you know, it's, it's semi-gloss, rough, vinyl roof-looking uh, black. Not good at all. Um, I don't know. I could have a bad batch of paint, which is possible. I've gotten a bad batch of uh, AK Extreme Metal from AK. Actually, I just threw it away. It was a bad batch. This is no good. You guys watch the Bad Batch on the Disney Channel? Uh, love that show. Love the Disney animations. The uh, Star Wars animations. Rebels and Clone Wars. I'm off on a tangent here, but it was a bad batch. I think it is. Uh, next time I order from uh, Dispay, which is soon, I'm going to get another jar of this and see if it's different. But that's a complete failure. That goes... By the wayside. That's done. All right, let's go on. Gaia. Now, Gaia, again, is reflective. I'm not quite sure why. I mean, there's going to be no... I'm painting it. This looks like semi-gloss black. Now, I checked it twice when I was painting it. It does say flat black. So, I mean, I can't even really compare the two. It's another one that came out shiny. Look at it. And the whole purpose is to uh, lose the shine, you know? Let's try the tape. It's probably pretty durable. It's a lacquer, for God's sakes, and these are usually super strong, but it's not really flat black. Let me get a fresh piece of tape, as that one is dying. All right, guys, let's move on. Tamiya XF1, their traditional acrylic solvent paint. Not bad. This has the. This is really good. This has the complete lack of uh, reflection. Again, if it was a darker pigment, we would have been golden. It's close to the mission. It's pretty good, particularly for the money. I pay about three bucks a jar around here. Uh, look at that. Not bad. I, again, it looks gray here, but if you didn't have it to compare it to, you would be seeing a, a, a flat black paint. And uh, they, they're durable. Let's check the lacquer. Now, the lacquer's a little darker. Seems like a little more of a semi gloss. Ooh. Seems like a little more of a semi gloss. Check this out. Then they're, they're acrylic. But look how much more darker it is. And it's a really smooth matte black like one of the others I just showed. So, I mean, look at the difference. You can tell by the pigments that you're getting a big difference. So let's compare. See it? Now we're closer in shade. Now we're closer in shade. This is the lacquer LP3 flat black. Look at that. If it didn't reflect, you probably had it. And... Um, I could put a matte clear a matte clear over this, but uh, I'm trying to show you guys just with just the paint. You can actually decal over this; it's that smooth. Sometimes you got to put a gloss. You don't have to on this. But it's actually the black is actually blacker than this. It just has a reflection to it. You can see by in the shadowing what it really looks like. One of the better ones so far. If you don't mind that slight glare, I think this is the best one so far. All right. Mr. Uh, Color. Again, it's like most of the rest. It's that almost that grayish tone. It's kind of smooth, in between smooth. Uh, of course, side by side, it looks like the others. Let's go in the black cloth again, where you can really see it. It's that reflection that kills it, but not as black. Not as black. I mean, look at it next to the Tamiya. That Tamiya lacquer is so far is the best one. All right, Aqueous. Mr. Color Aqueous, exact same thing. It even behaved the same with the little peeling off here on the edge. Let me get this other one flipped. Look at that. Aqueous, regular lacquer. It's identical. Identical. Let's bring in the... Yeah. No difference. Just a different formula. All right. Testers. Model Master. Really nice. This came out nice and even. It's a smooth. It's not that rough matte. Of course, next to the black... Uh, Mousseau Black, it's going to look like the others, but it's an even color. Um, Testers is really durable. Yeah, Model Master is just really tough stuff, and so is the regular Testers. All right, let's go out of order here and go to the Testers against the other Testers. There we go. It's the same. Probably the same paint in the jar. Can you see it? It's identical. So, no need to even compare the two. I think it's the same paint in a bigger jar. Harder to get now, but I happen to have some. My local area still has a full rack of Model Masters, so I'm pretty lucky about that. Here is the my latest acquisition, the Tamiya Enamel. 
All right, let's compare it on its own. Really nice. It looks close to their acrylic. Oh no, it's a little darker. It's a little darker. It's a little more black to it. Is it? But it's got that smooth, real smooth texture. Let's compare it on the black on black. Not bad. Not bad at all. So we got some good ones here, guys. Got some good ones. Oh, 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 oh. Gotta try a durability test. Yeah, nothing's going to harm this. Uh, these enamels. All right, and Ravel enamel is last. Again, it's close to all my other enamels. Almost indistinguishable from the Tamiya or the uh, Model Master and Testers. Yeah, it's it's pretty much the same. And there it is, of course, against it. Let's put it up against the black. And one more durability test. Enamels are really tough. These dried overnight, and uh, I also put them in the uh, the dehydrator for about 10 to 20 minutes. And there you go. That is all my matte blacks. We do have some clear losers. The display could be a bad batch because um, the paint was not that bad. So I think we caught a bad batch. I wasn't crazy about the AK. That was weak. Love the model, Mission Models. I think that was one of the better ones. And um, the game colors are good. And most of your enamels are good. But this, to me, a lacquer, I think, is the best. It's the blackest of all of them. Can you see it? Almost compares to the original. So it's got a, a somewhat of a glare compared to black 3.0, but it is very, very dark. Really good. The Tamiya, which is now available in America. I went to a store. They had them in. My distributor in the area has them in stock. They're finally in America. If you guys are watching my channel from the U.S. where I live, they're now in America, finally. So I can show them <laughs> with pride knowing you guys can get them. But anyway, there's your shootout of all the matte blacks. And let's try... A durability test at the end here of the uh, Mousseau Black. Well, I held up to the tape test. Now this is over primer. Uh, I know it doesn't stick well not on primer. Now, it did on here too though, but look, you can see it's coming off. See it? It's the first one to do that besides the AK. Now if you do a scratch test, this is the brush one, right off. I mean, it, it's not even close. And you can't coat it because you end up losing that deep non-reflective material let's try to rub this one this was over primer you see it's going to mark it up but it's not going to peel off like it is when you brush it over pure plastic even if i airbrush it over plastic i would have had the same result but this has a gray or a white primer underneath it and it obviously it doesn't come off because of the Go with a pointy end here, see if I can do it. No, nope, the pointy end isn't doing it. It's marking it, but it's not coming off. You know, which I guess, what's the point, right? It's still, it's still marked up. But uh, not known for its durability. If you want to build a kit, a uh, Gundam with uh, some of the highlights in that matte black, if you're going to put it on the shelf or in your glass cabinets or the detoff cabinets that a lot of guys use, the and, and you're not going to touch it, you can go ahead and use that. I mean, it's. No harm done. If you're not going to pose the, the kit often, uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Anyway, guys, that's the test. Um, I'm going to push these out of the way. I want to, again, show my buddy his hexagon rack that he sent me. I'll put a link below. He's on, uh, I believe, Instagram. These are my uh, Mr. Colors, but it also holds the new Tamiya lacquers. All right, guys, there you go. And Mr. Color it holds, and it holds uh, Aqueous. It's that standard job. These are a little smaller on your testers. And even then, you'd have to put it backwards to see the color. At least the caps are color-coded. So I am going to put a link in the description below for that, as well for my uh, airbrush in the airbrush holder. And um, I want to show you guys something I'm going to be testing soon. This just came in. These are all labeled and reviewed. We can push them out of the way. I don't know how far out I can go. Let's see. Check this out. I'm going to pull the camera back. So it's going to shake a little bit, guys. I'll put this in my community section anyway. This isn't just a master airbrush. It's a, a full set with a compressor, a portable compressor with the plug built into it, not even an adapter, which I like. Came with the hose, a quick release, 
and uh, a dual action, pretty nice airbrush too. Uh, this came in yesterday, I was going to review this before the black paint, but this came in late, so here we are. But I am going to review this right away, probably within two days, and then I'm going to review how to do uh, 2K auto paints on different surfaces. Sorry guys, I'm out again. Just to give you a clue here how shiny and beautiful this 2K is, look at this. Is that unbelievable? I'm going to spray it over every spoon I can find of all different kinds of paint. You know, nail polish, this is testers, look at this. And this, this is made for cars, so you can throw rocks at it, it's not going to chip. So this is going to be this week, and this is going to be this week. That's coming up. Alright guys, thank you so much for sticking with me through the whole video. Don't forget to like the video, it helps a lot. Please subscribe if you haven't already, so you get a... Uh, Notification, hit the notification bell to see when I'm going to be testing this uh, Master Airbrush Kit. Keep in mind, I think this was under 60 bucks for everything. The air compressor, the gun, the case, everything. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And you do want to watch this 4K auto paint clear test. It's a great test and the results are phenomenal. All right, guys, thank you so much for sticking with me. And we will see you with the Master Airbrush in the next video.